Okay, um, goods market and the IS curve. This is the continuation of the earlier lecture uh, that is closed economy in the short run. Let's talk about goods market and the IS curve. Well, uh, goods market is it is showing the combination of interest rates and the output such that your planned spending is equal to income. So the combination of interest rates and the output, interest rates and the output such that your planned spending plan spending is equal to income okay I'm not reiterating the facts which we have already discussed in the last lecture and we have already derived that y not equals to uh, c bar plus c plus tr bar plus i bar plus g bar upon 1 minus c into 1 minus t okay this is what we have already derived in the earlier lecture this guy okay so and you can write you can also write uh, c bar plus ctr bar plus i bar plus g bar as just a bar as an autonomous thing right so all of this is autonomous 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 means it is given or it is independent of income right so equilibrium income this guy is your equilibrium income it depends upon two things it depends upon autonomous spending and it also depends upon the propensity to consume out of income that is c so it is dependent upon autonomous spending and it is also dependent upon this c well it also depends upon t that is a tax rate but uh, right now i mean just for the uh just for the sake of simplicity, I'm just assuming that your equilibrium income is it is depending upon a bar that is your autonomous spending, and it is also dependent upon propensity to consume out of income. One thing, of course, you'll have to understand: in case if this numerator is higher, then the equilibrium income will also be higher, right? So, if higher is the autonomous spending, higher will be the equilibrium level of income. If higher is the autonomous spending, higher will be the equilibrium level of income. And uh, if higher is the propensity to consume, if C is also higher, then also equilibrium level of income will be higher. Okay, this also you can see from this formula. Then you have an investment schedule. See, I'll come to the IS curve. I have not described anything about the IS curve yet. I've just given you a very, very crude definition of the goods market and what an IS curve is. But we'll be deriving IS curve in the LM curve in this lecture. So just uh, uh, bear with me for some time. And then you will understand what exactly your IS curve is and how do you get an IS curve. The definition which I have just given you here, and it's not a complete definition, right? So just just uh, wait for the complete lecture and then you will understand what's going on well investment schedule i mean we have already we have also seen investment schedule in our earlier lectures um, but here your investment schedule is uh, like this that is i bar minus bi where i bar is nothing but autonomous investment spending okay that is your autonomous investment spending. What is autonomous investment spending? It means it is independent of income, right? It is not dependent upon any income. It is independent of income. And what is B bar? Oh, sorry, what is B? B is the interest responsiveness of investment demand. That is, B is the slope of, or you can say slope of investment schedule. It is the slope of investment schedule or you guys could say that it is the interest responsiveness of investment demand as we have written out here well what is your investment schedule showing investment schedule shows that what is the level of investment at each level of interest rate so it is the relationship between the interest rate and the investment spending as you guys could see here as you guys could see here it is the relationship between interest rate and the investment spending so it shows what is what is it that it is trying to show it is showing the level of planned and level of investment at each level of interest rate see what happens is that at the lower interest rate 